Hello, um, I'm Melissa Lockwood, and I'm going to be talking about um, how the fashion industry is causing a lot of pollution on our planet, and then also solutions and new systems that can be implemented to help, you know, lower the waste and the pollution that the fashion industry is creating. And so um, now I will talk a little bit about fast fashion and um, Fast fashion is um, is based on copying and replicating high-end fashion um, as fast as possible. And they exploit the workers and the materials and the earth and it's causing a lot of pollution. Um, and so fast fashion is really a major contributor because it's all its mass production waste goes into the landfills and um, so I think that with the overproduction of clothing, um, you know, we need to learn to upcycle clothing. Um, I'm now going to list off some of the um, statistics about fast fashion waste. And so, um, so every year, 92 million tons of fabric and clothing go into the landfill. And um, the apparel industry is um, globally increasing its pollution by 50% um, in the next 20 years, supposedly. Um, the average US consumer throws away 81.5 pounds of clothing. Um, the number of times a garment is worn has gone down um, 36% in the last 15 years. Um, the fashion ind industry is responsible for 20% of the global, global water waste. It takes 20,000 liters of water to produce one kilogram of cotton. $500 million are lost every year due to the, due to, and to the failure of recycling and um, overproduction and underutilization of the clothing that's made. 10% of microplastics in the ocean come from the fashion industry. 2.6 million tons of returned products are just gone into the landfill each year. And um, fa fast fashion brands are producing um, 12 times more clothing than they were in the year 2000. Um, and so also, the lifespan of clothing is reduced and um, fast fashion's pollution is long-term environmental damage. It exasperates climate change. And um, things like social media postings by influ influencers has inspired the fashion industry to rush produce, which means that they see something online that someone's shirt that they made or they like and they copy it and mass produce it as fast as possible um some of the um um labels that are doing really fast is like zara and h and m and sheen and they would try to see the image and have it out in the public in as little as two weeks sometimes um the Fast fashion waste is causing um, toxic methane greenhouse gases. Um, there's microplastics that go out in the clothing is actually a lot of it toxic to wear any of the synthetic fabrics now. It's been discovered that they, they go into your skin when you wear them. So um, since fast fashion is rushing to make things fast and cheap and exploiting you know the workers and then also the buyers of their products by putting the people's health at risk um you know that's a pretty big system that needs to be changed like fast fashion needs to be turned to slow fashion or just you know normal fashion but um also i'd like to mention um that there are huge waste sites around the world where fast fashion excess garments go 
you know, people do a great thing when they donate the extra clothing they own to charities. But a lot of times the charities are selective about what they want to curate into their stores, believe it or not. They're like, oh, no, this isn't our style. It's too conservative. It's too risque. Oh, it has a little smudge on it. And so those garments are bundled up and shipped to places like Africa, to different countries in Africa and in South America and China. And so one example in Chile is uh, the Atacama Desert. And there are mounds and mounds of usable clothing that are just laying on the desert floor. It's the driest desert on the earth. And it's got huge pile of clothing. You can look online and discover that and see it for yourself. Um, also in Nairobi, uh, there's a river. I think it's the Nairobi River. And it, parts of it are just clogged with clothing and that's going to waste. And it's also leaching into the environment. And um, it's also, um, you know, just a mess. And also there's, uh, in China, there's huge, huge piles of excess clothing because it's not trendy. It's not popular to shop vintage or shop use. Um, and also, there's a lot of manufacturing that happens there. So there's mass production waste that also goes into their landfills. Um, so generally, if you just, um, you know, search online for fast fashion uh, waste sites, you'll find a lot of them. And it's pretty interesting to see visually. And then it's, you know, tragic to see. But this is why we need to, um, at this moment, consider all the different things like upcycling, fashion industry, pattern area waste, and then um, zero waste pattern making. So um, now I'm gonna go into the first segment of the, um, my first workshop is um, about zero, uh, about upcycling. And so now I'm gonna show you some techniques that I have for upcycling. Um, I'm not actually gonna cut apart the clothes because I have a small, backpack that I use as my clothing and they're already you know um salvaged garments from rag garment waste and so here we go <laughs> okay um so since t-shirts are a super common garment um first I would like to describe how you can turn this into a top of a different type or a skirt um so the first one is to make a skirt, you just flip your t-shirt over and then um, you're gonna, I have these big scissors. So, so you're gonna snip, snip, snip from the beginning of the sleeve to the other opening of the other side of the sleeve. And so that's completely open. And then you can, you know, you know, wear it as a, a skirt. And usually your t-shirts are a little bit looser than your um, waist. And so you can actually just cut a little along the edge, make a tiny slit, and then tie that. And since a uh, t-shirt fabric is stretchy and when you wash it, it returns to its shape, um, you instantly have a shirt. And now there's another way to make a top. Um, and all that is, is you, you know, you've already uh, flipped this open on a different shirt and the, or you can do it on the same one and it's multi-use, but you just cut along the bottom edge, chun, 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 and then that pops up and it becomes like a, you know, the spaghetti string. And um, you can, um, even, you know, if you need to tighten it up for your preference, you just hand sew, you know, to tighten that up. And so then you have a top with the straps. And like if you're traveling and you want to be really efficient um, and you want to have a skirt that can also be a top or you just want to travel, you know, like shorts or a skirt and then you have a multi-use um, one of those. Um, basically, with a long sleeve shirt, you can make a long sleeve sleeveless dress. And all you have to do is um, 
cut the sleeves off of your dress and then cut the sleeves into um, strips and you sew that into one long piece and you add those on just sewing around in your thing to make like a cylinder down your dress or down your shirt to make a dress. Um, you can also um, turn this into a skirt and you cut the sleeves off and then you flip it, you know, you cut and open that and then you um, you can take those sleeves. Well, usually um, when I take that, I um, when I wanna wear it, I twist it to the side. So the sides are now the front and back. And then I take the rectangle, you know, the kind of trapezoid shape that the sleeve makes and I sew it on here so they're not wasted and it it, it looks, you know, pretty fun. It's worth experimenting with. Um, and then um, here's another idea. Here's a fast fashion discard dress that someone got rid of and I ended up with, but I actually don't really want to wear it because it's made out of polyester. And, uh, but you can make this into a, a skirt and a top if you want to have more flexibility of combinations of clothing if you're keeping a small small wardrobe. And all you do is um, cut across cut across where the skirt of the dress is, and then you have a skirt, and then the top is automatically like a crop top. You might just have to do a tiny bit of hand sewing on this area. And so um, I'm sure everyone has seen um, the jean skirt. Um, this is an interesting thing. I found several pairs of perfectly brand new Uniqlo, uh, which is another fast fashion brand that's fabrics going in the garbage. They were brand new and just discarded in a bag on the um, side of the street. So I picked them up. They were totally clean. I washed them. You know, when you wash something, it's sanitized. You can wear it. But um, if you want to make this into a skirt, you just um, open up the pant legs. And then, you know, if you have the pant leg part, you can sew that on to cover, you know, any areas that seem a little too short. But it's easy to turn pants into um, shorts. And then it's also easy to turn pants into a, um, a skirt. I'll just start with this one. You just cut it off. And then you sew the parts together and then you can sew um, the sides on as a decorative flap, um, kind of like a kilt. Um, these were also something I found discarded. Um, I wore them. I wore them recently while I was painting. Because we have paint spots, and um, that might be a. I might turn these into a um, uh, a skirt or something else. But this is also by one of the really big pullers. I guess it's in reverse. This is Dara. Ironically enough, when I went out searching for clothing to wear that was um, salvaged it on uh, literally being fast fashion waste. Um, oh, here's one more idea that happened. Uh, so I, someone I know found this really cool like jacket on the street, brought it back, we cleaned it and washed it and then um, but the sleeves were really big and really wide and I didn't like wearing them. And so I just um, turned it inside out and um, I hand stitched it. And now the sleeves are narrow. And, um, I'll just put it on once. Um, but it was literally gonna just rot on the side of the road from what I understand. So, but being washed, a couple times and being modified. I wore it at a, a really um, nice film festival I went to as one of my dress up garments. It's sort of like a costume really. But you can see the sleeves are now, um, I can do things with my arms without having them um, really wide. So if you have something you just want to change a little bit, 
you know, it's easier than you think. Um, Melissa, um, is there anything that can't be upcycled in this way? Do you given us lots of ideas there for garments that can be changed in different ways? Are there any garments that you've gone, oh, I really want to change it, but it's impossible? Or is everything changeable? Everything is changeable. Um, you could always, um, if you could dye something, if you collect up your onion skins or different herbs, different flowers from your um, garden, you can change it in some way. Experimenting is really good. Um, uh, you can cut out little holes. Uh, one thing that I used to do was take sports jackets, women's sports jackets, and did it with men's too. Turn it inside out, snip out parts off of that, you know, like a silky lining and wear it in New York City and people are like, I love your jacket. And they were making fun of me. I had a friend who wanted one, so I gave her one. And then she wore it to her high, you know, high rise uh, architecture job. And it got, you know, didn't get, you can't wear that to your office or whatever. But you'd be surprised just changing something the littlest bit. Like you could just stitch something on it, like a patch or just some weird stitches. And then it becomes a conversation piece. Like, um, I did that for, since I was a kid, I did it for 10 years kind of professionally, um, selling things in a, in a store and the more, um, unique it was, the more people enjoyed it and seemed they, they would purchase those. I couldn't read that comment. Um, Rhea is commenting that the problem is the polyester. It is hard to find good materials nowadays how and what to do, like how to use the polyester. I found that weaving rugs with it is one thing that I did, but I'm also concerned that those little fibers come out and go down the drain. Um, but if you, you can use polyester to make rugs, um, it's kind of toxic. It, it should be banned as a product. And recently I had a someone that, this wanting to be a sustainable designer asked me if I could help them find a supplier for manufacturing with polyester. And I said, no, I won't help you find that. You're supposed to be sourcing locally to where you live because there's people hand making fabrics and you're making jackets. No, no, no. But people still want to use it because they're thinking more about profit than the people on the planet. Um, but bags, you can make bags with polyester. Maybe people won't be, you know, absorbing it into their skin so much. Um, 